This is a solar powered fan for vehicles and the idea is that you wind one of your windows down and then you hook it over the window with the solar panel on the inside and just this lip sticking outside and it creates a very small air path and when the sun shines in it this fan spins and it pulls air from inside the vehicle and it expels it out the front uh, in the vicinity of where it's hooked over the glass and to make sure there's a proper seal it comes with a section of uh, this material here which uh, it's got this sort of uh, open end that you presumably slot over the glass um, on either side of the fan and then this blade just kind of provides a gentle sort of seal against the top of the door. And I was going to fit this to my car because where the car parks normally, it gets a lot of sunshine. It was, I was going to put it in the passenger window because that is the one that gets the most sun and it would have just meant, you know, uh, when it's, it's prone to the condensation problems with our humid climate and when it's really sunny, you get a lot of that, you know, condensation forming at night. So I thought it'd be quite nice to put this on and then something terrible happened. Uh, I was driving home in Stormwell from my brother's and uh, I went to wind the window down at, and I meant to do the, the uh, driver's side just to let air flow through the vehicle but I did the passenger side window because it's the uh, central sort of win window control on the uh, driver's door and the, the passenger window started going down I thought oh no I don't want that and I pressed the button to go up again it wound back up and then there was this loud bang noise and then the sound of something rattling down inside the door and I thought oh and I drove back to the house and I thought I really should not operate that again. I don't know what state it's in now, but the last thing I want to do is wind it down. It doesn't go up again. And it was pissing with rain. And I I thought, well, I'll just give it a wee jab. And I pushed the button and the glass just went shunk down inside the door. And that was the start of a very, very long and wet evening. Uh, so for reference, if this is a car door, right? And there's the glass and you get the winding mechanism which is either a handle, or in this case, it's the motorised winding mechanism. They both seem to go onto the same point. Then there's a sort of pantographish type mechanism behind that that grips the bottom of the glass. And uh, it's done with those uh, brake cables. You know the thing where you've got the uh, cable with the sort of, uh, the outer sheath with this sort of moving wire rope inside? And when I op open the door up, and uh, again, removing all the trims off these doors is a labyrinth. You know, all the locking mechanisms are poking through it and everything. And it's very used to break components. And, and I did actually break the locking mechanism. And latterly, when I looked it up on the internet to see what I did wrong, it said, oh, it's really easy to break the locking mechanism. You have to remove the whole lock assembly. And it's like, oh, geez. So it's not a small task taking the side off the door. So I thought, right, okay, well, uh, and I'm not going to, waste money on a, a pantograph mechanism. I, I never normally put that door window down, so I just siliconed it up. But for reference, if you do uh, go through the puzzle of taking plastic trims off uh, with all these hidden screws and clips, and then you take the uh, sort of like the, what do they call that? The lining, uh, there's a name for it. The bulkhead? I think it's might be the bulkhead, but the covering off the door, then you'll see in the metal work, there's, there may actually be a couple of, meta, of, of plastic bungs put in, just sort of caps. And if you prise those out, behind it, you'll see basically a clamp with a screw or maybe it'll be a, a nut inside it. And those are the bit that grips onto the glass. So if you wind it down a bit and you loosen those, you can generally sort of lift the glass out or, or put it up out the way while you're working on getting the rest of the system out. That basically, it's just basically two plates that clamp together with the glass in between with a sort of rubber seal. But anyway, uh, I siliconed it up and that ruled out ever winding it down again so the auto fan will not be getting installed. However, let's open it up and I'm not expecting a lot inside. I'm fundamentally expecting the solar panel basically powering a motor directly and it won't even be a fancy motor. It won't be like a computer fan. It will just be an ordinary little three volt motor. So let's open it. Uh, longer screwdriver. Nope, that's got the insulation on it, stops it going in. Now what else have I got? Cheapy screwdriver. Oh, that fits. So I'll just have to stick what I normally do in the vehicle and uh, I use uh, the silicon, silica gel uh, absorbing units that then you can dry out later on. And it usually solves a problem anyway. This was just, I got this in a whim just because Partly because I wanted to take a look inside it fundamentally. Which we're doing. So four screws hold this together. 
I'm not expecting it to be clipped together. Oh, really, that is it, isn't it? It's a bit more complicated inside. Oh, oh, that's, I don't think that's supposed to be broken like that. Okay, so there's a solar panel. More screws. Let's bring in my favourite little Poundland screwdriver. It allows a uh, fast whizzing of screws just because of its, uh, of its grip in the barrel. So there's the fan. Can I get this further apart? I should be able to get it further apart. That will be pressed on. This may, may, may burst. Ah, so it may actually be one of the tiny little uh, cassette deck type motors. Said Clive, showing his age by mentioning cassette decks at all. Or it could be described as the little servo motors you get in the, uh, well, DVD players. Everything's MP3 these days. It's all gone on so far. It looks like a brushed motor. Is it brushed? I think it is brushed. Um, yeah, just a standard low power motor designed to operate fairly efficiently off a small solar panel. And that's fundamentally it. And in here, the air is just deflected. The air is thrown centrifugally from the fan or centripedally uh, and then finds its way out through this channel, which is now broken off completely. So, uh, right, maybe I'll just salvage it for components then. So yes, that's what's inside uh, one of these little solar fans. I suppose in certain applications, particularly dry places. Oh, there was a disclaimer of this that said, if don't use it if there's going to be rain. Given the amount of effort of putting it on and putting the strip round, I would say that in Scotland or the Isle of Man that it's probably not that usable unless you manage to seal it up completely. But on the other hand, if you did seal it up completely, if you had a vehicle that wasn't used an awful lot and was prone to condensation, then something like this might actually help with removing the, that condensation from it on a sort of ongoing basis. So it's quite neat inside, but yeah, no use for that now. But I shall salvage the components.